This is the plaintiff, Devon Starkey Sr. He says he and the defendant have been separated for 25 years and they had a son together. Tragically, their son passed away a few months ago. They had him cremated and the funeral home divided the ashes into two separate urns for them. The uncaring defendant took both urns, refuses to give him his half of their son's ashes so he can bury them. And he's here suing for their return today. is the defendant, Deanna Shaw. She says the plaintiff has some nerve suing her in court today because he wasn't even in their son's life until he was 13 years old. He was a terrible influence on their son, and incredibly, they were both incarcerated in the same jail at the same time. Bottom line, according to the law, the ashes are the property of the parent who had 100% custody. That would be her. And she doesn't want him to have them because he wants to do something unethical and illegal with them. She's accused of holding on tight to her son. The defendant has filed a counter suit for $150 for the balance of a GoFundMe account. All parties, please get your rating. Be seated, come to order, please. The tickets have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Mr. Starkey, yes. you are suing Deanna Shaw, the mother of your deceased child, um, for half of your son's ashes. Yes. Uh, that, according to you, she refuses to give to you. Yes. First of all, I want to express my condolences to both of you because I know this is extremely difficult, and I am so sorry to hear about the passing of your son. How old was he? 27. What did he die of? A drug overdose. Was there an autopsy performed? Yes. Was there a toxicology performed and it says that it was a drug overdose? No, the toxicology still hasn't come back yet, but the coroner said it's definitely a drug overdose. How did the coroner know? Uh, due to his heart and his lungs, the test that he done with the autopsy. What was the drug of choice? They're saying it's heroin, but we haven't got the toxicology back to find out. The toxicology will tell you. Right. All right. Um, you have the ashes, correct? Yes. All right. Now, at the time when arrangements were being made, my understanding is that there had been an agreement between the two of you that the funeral home would put the ashes in two separate urns, correct? Correct. Ha half and half, so that each of you could have half. And then what happens after that? Well, we had, I got paperwork. The funeral home did put them in two separate urns. Uh, my one of my daughters tried to put up a benefit for my son to help us pay back money that we had borrowed for the funeral cost. Money was donated. Every dime that came out of the GoFundMe page went to the funeral home first. And then what was left over, we split the cost. Wait, wait we split the cost, meaning what? Me and Deanna split the, because the GoFundMe only raised like $1,000. And the funeral cost was like forty-eight hundred. Oh, okay. So when you so the entire GoFundMe went, and then what was left over of that you split and right. paid. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. After. But that wasn't the reason for the problem and dispute between the two of you on the ashes, correct? No, that's that's just part of it. Yeah. Uh, but also after after the funeral was over, my cousin had came to me at the funeral home, and wanted to donate to help, but she didn't have a check with her. I told her, no problem, mail it to me later. You know, that we had enough to cover the funeral. Well, instead of mailing it to me, she put it on the GoFundMe page later on that night before we shut it down. That's where she's wanting to sue me for half of that. Uh, then, so in other words, there was $150 left over on the GoFundMe page. $300? Well, well, it was 300 donated. She made a $300 donation. Right. So that's the reason for the counterclaim of $150 on the, okay. Right. But also, uh, she's not considering they also took out like $24 for their fee. So actually, it was only $276 that's left over. Okay. Okay. Uh, I can't believe we're talking about this. I, I know. This is horrible. Um, after that, like I said, she, the date, we made arrangements where what we What was to, the reason she told you that she w did not want to give you your urn? That she didn't like the way I was going to have them buried. I was How were you going to have them buried? I was going to take, well, at first I tore it at the funeral home. I was distraught, and I, I thought about it later. Uh, I was going to dig a hole with my mom's grave and have them put in there. Is your mom buried on your property? No. Okay, that's, then that's, you can't dig a hole by your mom's grave. Correct. You have to pay to have the procedure done, uh, you know, correct. legitimately. Okay, correct. and so when you say, 
I shouldn't have said that. You mean you told her you were going to do it on the sly to not have to pay. Right. And well, that upset her. Right. Okay. Because the idea of you getting caught and then having everything disturbed and your son's that was too much for her. Right. That's when she refused to give you. Right. Pay. Right. Okay. Then <laughs> she wouldn't talk to me about it, so I talked to her husband, tried because he's more level headed. We get along a little easier. And they wanted me I told I tried to tell them, you know, since then I've changed my mind. You know, I more come to the reality of the death. Instead of having them buried, I wanted to take them home, put them in the house like a little memorial and then when i pass it's going to be that my ashes be mixed with his and then we get buried okay she's not willing to accept that she doesn't trust you right, right. she says it's a lie you know because okay let me talk to you <laughs> how many children do you have i have three i have two with him and i have a 25 year old daughter with him that it's just put into the middle of this and she has been going through a lot with me. I raised my son. I raised my daughter. He was not there as a father. He, my son, was introduced to drugs by him. And I blame him for my son's death. How do you know what you just said? Because my son has been through counseling his whole life. And I've been through every step of the way trying to keep him clean. And my son has admitted to his dad giving him drugs to sell at school. He's admitted to... Not just to me, but to counselors, therapists, and psychiatrists. That his own father gave him drugs to sell at school? Yes, yes. And it's been an ongoing battle with trying to keep my son clean. And, and I feel like every time I reached out to him to please help and do the right thing as a father should do, he never did. Did you ever confront him? All the time. On the issue of having introduced drugs to your son? All the time, Your Honor. We've been to court probably 20 times. And every time, he, I would have to take him back to court. We what even had a guardian at light him. What would be his response He to always that? denied it. He always would deny it, or he would tell me that um, you punish him how you want to, I'll punish him how I want to, or he would never come to agreement with me. And unfortunately, my son, like I said, he turned to drugs, and he lived in a boot camp all the way in Reno, Nevada. And it got he, that bad. It got that bad. How long he ago was at was his that? dad's house when how long he was, ago was seven, that? He was 17 or 18. He was at his dad's house. I kicked him out of the house at 18 because he started using drugs, and I kicked him out of the house trying to give tough love. That was it. I just said, you got to go to school or you got to work. And he chose to leave. And, and he, do what? He was gone for a month, and he do begged what? me. Where did he go? To his friends. He was 18. And then what? He begged me, Mom, please let me come home. And I said, honey, no, you got to have a job. I said, you can come eat every day. Every day there's dinner, and you can come shower, but you cannot sleep here. And two days after I told him that he couldn't come home, he was shot at his house. He was what? He was shot. Shot? Yes. He was robbing a drug dealer at his house. What? And I got a phone call at 10.30 at night from her, from Lisa, saying that he's on the way to the hospital and he had been shot. I mean, do you know the trauma what happened? that this man What happened? Put me Talk through? to me about that specifically. What happened? Uh, I, was, was I was incarcerated when he was shot. What were shot? you incarcerated for? For dealing. For dealing in drugs? Yes. Is, it, is what she is, is accusing you of no, correct? No, everything's co incorrect, but I did Did you not... introduce your child to drugs? No, ma'am. Did My you drug... have your son selling drugs for you in his high school? No, ma'am. Were you two in jail together? Yeah, one time. We were, I was in prison, and he committed a crime, a robbery, and ended up in the same prison I was at. We wasn't there on the same case, nothing like that. It was just a coincidence that he ended up in the same prison I did. According to her, your son has admitted in therapy sessions and tried to deal with it um, that you were providing him with drugs to sell at the high school. Why would your son say, were you present during that? It was in a psychological evaluation and he was... You read it? He, yes, and he had to go Why from Why would your son that... lie about that? 
he didn't lie. He didn't say that. She's lying. That was never said. I was never ordered. No counseling. That was like, do that's what have, she wanted. You don't happen to have that thing in writing, do you? No. <laughs> I say was your here. son married? No. Did he have children? No children. Okay, because we have an issue here that has to be dealt with. And this is where the problem lies. So is this guy entitled to half the act? Yes, it, him being the father of this boy, he's entitled to uh, put him to rest in any way that he's I get to. it, but she is saying that he's responsible for the, their son's death because he introduced him to drugs. Is that is that an excuse not to give him half? Uh, I don't think so. I... Who's got a strong opinion? Quickly, who's got a strong opinion? I think like if he wants these ashes so badly, then that means he must have loved his son. So I think, yeah, he deserves to have them. Fair enough, going inside the courtroom. Your son's ashes, are, did your son have any assets? Did Nothing. he own a car? He, okay. When someone dies without a will, the case has to go to probate court. Why? Because probate court has certain procedures you have to follow. One of them is that you put a notice in a newspaper because the law requires that there be an attempt to notify anyone who may have an interest in the probate case including any children that he may have. And, and it's kind of silly because who reads these things, right? Um, but, but it's the law and there's a reason for it because somebody somewhere maybe does read these things and then realize that they have a claim to assets um, and then intervene in a probate court case. I would like desperately to just be able to handle it here, but I can't because his ashes are considered an asset. So you are going I'm going to have to refer your case to probate court, but I want to tell you what's going to happen in probate court, okay? And that is that if the two of you are his surviving um, parents, is that it's going to go half to him and half to you. I have no problem doing that. I just don't feel that he needs to go and just, you can't legally dig a hole in a cemetery and we've offered to pay half of that. We've offered that. He's just being very unreasonable. Okay, the what reason, happened with that? We got a nasty message from Deanna that no matter what her husband said, I wasn't getting the ashes. I had no reason to feel to keep contacting him at that point. All right, folks, here's what's, and you have a counterclaim. She has a counterclaim you have a counterclaim against him, which you just filed for $150 of the GoFundMe because that was the agreement between you guys that you would split it. According to you, there was a how much charge? There was a, they took out a percentage. I got 276. Is that accurate? There's a percentage it's that they take probably. of every, okay. It's probably. I haven't the done 276 that. was the total? All right. I'm ordering you to pay her $138 on the counterclaim because that was the agreement between you all on the, on the GoFundMe page. That part I can take care of. Um, what I, I, I cannot make an order on this case because this has to be done through probate. What I can do is talk to you. Um, as a parent, as someone who knows what the law is in your state, and um, as someone who has some advice for you so that each day gets it's never going to go away. It's, your life will never be the same. Your lives will never be the same. But every day will get just a little more tolerable. But only if you let go of the anger that you have inside of you. I absolutely agree with I you. I wish you both... I wish you both peace and I wish you both um, luck and faith in helping you to move on with that journey, okay? Good luck, folks. Well, in a pretty tragic case, to say the least, the judge really cannot make a ruling on the urns of your son's ashes. You do have to give her a portion of what you got back, the 300 and 100 and some bucks out of That's that. That's no problem. Um, I don't know. I think everybody's just wondering, did you do some of the things that she... Never. She, She's, you, come on. You can't be as clean as you're trying to I'm not. I'm not being acting. I told everybody I had a prison sentence. No problem. Here's the thing. When I met her, she was a runaway prostitute. 
I took her and tried to Look, make her. No, 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 no seriously. You don't serious. have to make a dig like I'm that not, at I'm this not, point. No, I'm trying to explain the whole thing. Wait, I, no, I why, are you doing that? why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? She said and made me look bad out there, but I didn't tell nothing. All this stuff I've held in all these years and never told this. I'm not the one that's bad here. I look, try to meet look, up look, with look, her. Look, you're the one who's been in jail. Come on. And she would have went to jail too, well, but no. Don't, you know, don't keep knocking her I'm down. Not, I'm on. not. I'm not. That's why I didn't say nothing in there. I'm trying to keep this to myself, trying to keep it clean. All right, all right. But, I think you know, I've heard enough. We've heard you, enough. You've okay. heard enough. But I will say this. She's the reason my son's dead. If she wouldn't have made his life so miserable all these years, he would have never turned to drugs. That's the fact. Of it You're all. the one who went to jail for but drugs. she's the one that made his life she miserable. She used to take his drugs. I used to run to, she used to be run to me. Okay. My God. The uh, plaintiff is really pretty distraught right now. Or the defendant, rather. Ms. Shaw. Ms. Shaw, come on out. Let me just say... Look, he should not have said any of that kind of stuff. And, uh, okay, I'm sorry. It's obvious you're going through a lot of, you know, a lot of upset emotional issues right now. What do you think is going to happen? I mean, you have the ashes, and I, I neglected to ask him if he was going to go to probate court. That's really what has to happen. Unfortunately, the judge couldn't, couldn't rule on that matter now. Would you go to probate court? You probably won't if you don't have to, will you? Well, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. This is a this is a real tragic situation. I think he just shows his real character when he talks about uh, the. I believe you. The I totally. Of his children. I totally special. believe you. I believe you. I'm so sorry. We're all so sorry for you. But thank you. Thank you very much. I hope things work out. Okay, and you find some just peace. Keep praying. That's all. Keep it up. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care of her. Harvey, really a tragic case. What do you think? I mean, Doug, look, I, I think everybody realizes the defendant is morally right here, but the fact is that the plaintiff has a right to do what he wants with the ashes.